Hey guys, this is Eckhart Slaughter. Hello and welcome to another Star Wars video. And we're approaching the end of our dedicated coverage for The Mandalorian. The season's over. The gallery for season two has been released, which is the behind the scenes featurette, which I highly, highly recommend you watching. So with that being said, I thought we'd return to the beginning and kind of examine some lingering questions that I think The Mandalorian still has to answer. However, before we get into that, did you get anything cool Mandalorian related? Related for Christmas? If so, make sure to let me know down in the comments section. And if you have a picture, as always, send me a tweet over on Twitter. That's at Eckhart Slaughter. I would love to see it and I'll retweet a few of them. My wife and I didn't really do gifts this year, but for my son, we did get a really sweet Mandalorian mini book, one of those little golden books that was very touching, especially considering how season two ends. But my big hope is that this time in a few years, kids and adults as well will be asking for a Mandalorian video game, maybe revive Star Wars 1313. I don't know. But with that being said, let's talk about what I believe to be the largest mystery and the biggest question unanswered thus far by the Mandalorian. The question is, of course, related to Baby Yoda. I mean, the Mandalorian's history is interesting, Mando himself, but I think we know generally the kind of life that he lived. He was adopted by the Mandalorians. He took the creed. He never took his helmet off. He served various roles as bounty hunter and as a part of a gang. But Grogu's history is much more mysterious. We know that he was around before Order 66, he was at the Jedi Temple, somehow he survived and now he's made his way into the Mandalorian's care. What really interests me, however, is how did Grogu, Baby Yoda, sort of find his way back to the galactic stage? We get a hint from Ahsoka that Grogu's long been hiding his powers so that he wouldn't be discovered. Well, what changed? Why did he feel the need to expose himself, and how did he fall under the dangerous gaze of Moff Gideon? I've been thinking recently about the events of Chapter 1, especially after Chapter 15. As a reminder, in that episode, the Mandalorian, accompanied by his allies, sneaks on to an Imperial base, and while dressed up as an Imperial, is forced to fend off what he calls pirates, but are most likely freedom fighters trying to hurt the Empire's mining operations. A lot of people posted in the comments of that video that we get some similarities to the beginning of season one and the beginning of the Mandalorian's journey. What do I mean? Well, before the Mandalorian knows his tasks, he's sent by the client to go retrieve Baby Yoda and accompanied by IG-11, they slaughter an entire encampment of Nyctos. Nyctos being those mean looking aliens. But what were those Nyctos doing? I mean, it's very easy to consider them bad guys because that's how Nikto are usually portrayed. Kind of racist by Star Wars. I'm just joking. But for all we know, the Nikto could have been protecting Baby Yoda. They could have been a part of some organization simply meant to protect the child. I mean, they could have been potential allies for the Mandalorian himself on his journey to return the child to the Jedi had he not overwhelmingly killed all of them. I mean, yeah, the Nikto response with violence, but so would the Mandalorian if someone like him in an IG unit threatened Baby Yoda's existence. Anyway, I've been looking at sort of non-TV material for any hint about who these guys might be, and there's not a whole lot. On the StarWars.com site, we do get a guide for the chapter, sort of images accompanied by a brief description of what happened. We get Khalil and the Mandalorian riding towards, and I quote, a compound that holds the asset. Then later, the defenders are called mercenaries and gunfighters, but we don't get any more detail than that. From the episode, we also do get a brief bit of background from Khalil, who says that many have sought to capture the asset or the individual, who turned out to be Baby Yoda, from the mercenary compound, but all have died, indicating that they're not really doing anything or they weren't doing anything with Baby Yoda, they were seemingly just protecting him. Also, Grogu hasn't been chained up, he's sort of just sitting in his carrier, he's got a blanket on, he doesn't have have cuffs on, there's no evidence that he's been abused or anything, so one has to wonder whether these really are just people who've captured him or whether they're defenders. I also think that there's other unknowns about the beginning of Grogu's story related to the Mandalorian. For example, IG-11 is also on Arvala 7 looking for the child, but he has strict orders to kill Grogu, which is not what the Mandalorian got. The Mandalorian was told to capture if possible 
possible and kill unnecessary, IG-11 probably has orders from a different master, or perhaps a droid wasn't trusted to return him safely. Also, those prior attempts, we don't know whether those were also commissioned by Moff Gideon and his Imperial Remnant, or whether, before the child was constantly on the move, there were multiple groups trying to capture him or kill him for whatever means. All in all, very interesting, and I'm really happy that Grogu's story is still wide open. I mean, obviously, spoiler alerts for the recent episode of The Mandalorian, he's off to train now with Luke, but I doubt he's going to stay at Luke's temple. I think the possibility that Grogu is killed by Kylo Ren is pretty much as close to zero as possible, or killed in the events of Kylo's running from the temple. However, the Star Wars comics have changed it, but also those intervening years, those 20 years plus between episode three and the current events are also mysterious. So I think that's a lot of stuff that could be eventually covered in books. We do have a Mandalorian novel coming next year, but I wouldn't be surprised for that content to also appear in later seasons and Grogu could also appear in other TV shows set in the era. I think the prime contender would obviously be the Bad Batch, but there's also Kenobi and more that could be unannounced. Anyway, I'd love to hear your thoughts on the matter. I think this is a really interesting topic and Grogu is one of the most interesting characters in Star Wars. The appearance of a baby Yoda-like creature was leaked slightly before the season one premiere and I thought it was the dumbest idea ever, but I honestly couldn't have been more wrong. Anyway, this video is a little bit short, so I'm going to end today by answering a hashtag AskGak question. For those of you who don't know, you can put a question with the hashtag AskGak down in the comments and I'll answer them at the end of some of my videos. Today's comes from Master Thexen, who asks, why didn't Kylo Ren use Force Lightning? I think that's an interesting one. We've seen Force Lightning used by the most evil of Sith, in the case of Sidious, and also some who are a bit more on the gray side, like Count Dooku, but I think the point in Kylo Ren not using Force Lightning is that he is still so conflicted. Kind of, most Sith have the major conflict in their lives being the pull to the dark side when they're on the light, the case with, like, Jason. Arguably, that's what Darth Vader has to fight against while he's Anakin. Kylo Ren is the exact opposite, which I thought was an interesting choice. He wants to be bad and evil, but he's always being pulled to the light side. I think maybe it could be that remainder of light and goodness in him that makes using Force Lightning difficult, but I think around like the beginning parts of Episode 9 when he was in his really, really emo phase, he probably could have done so, but yeah, just my thoughts. I'm not saying it couldn't happen in a comic or book, or even that it hasn't happened. I don't keep up with all of the Star Wars comics, but the Thematically, that's my guess for why they avoided using it in the movies. I think if he really wanted to in the correct moment, he probably could have, but it fits better if he doesn't. But that's just my thought. Again, look forward to reading your guys' comments. Until next time, be safe, have a good one, and may the Force be with you.